It's raining, which means that I'm probably not going to go out hill climbing or hiking today. But I live on the third floor, which means I have access to stairs. I'm going to climb stairs today, and that's how I'm going to get my training in. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use free weights while working out. But if you don't have free weights, you can make your own homemade weights, whether that's a soup can or it's a small or large water bottle filled with sand or maybe an old bleach bottle that you fill with sand. Make certain that it's something that you can hold comfortably in your hands that's not slipping and sliding and also that it's a weight that your body can handle. Because we're working different muscles and each of those muscles you will discover very quickly has its own strength capacity, you will need a variety of different weights. So if you have a scale, you can measure how much weight you are using by using that scale. Either you step on the scale without that weight and then you step on the scale with that weight and you do the math to decide how much that weight is. Or you can weigh the actual item itself, whatever works for you. And so you don't need to spend money on weights. Use what you have. That said, if you do have free weights, bands, balls, etc., you can use those. And I will be showing you how to use bands, how to use balls, and how to use free weights, as well as using your own body weight to do different types of activities so that you can build muscular strength as well as muscular endurance. Once upon a time ago, I used to shoulder press about 120 pounds. I can't even do 10. No shame in going down. I'm gonna start at eights. So how you know a weight is right for you, I just did one set of 12. By the time I got to the 11th and 12th one, I was really having to force myself to push it in order to complete it. If you can do 12 repetitions with your current weight and it's really easy peasy, that should be your indication that you're not using enough weight. Not if muscular development is your goal. If muscular endurance is your goal, then by all means, if you can push out 24, 25 before you finally get tired, that's muscle endurance. Otherwise, like me, if you're trying to simply develop muscle mass and with that some strength, you want to go with a slightly heavier weight, less repetition. So anywhere between 8 and 12 repetitions and those last one or two should be really, really hard to push out. For those bicep curls, I was just doing 10 pounds. I probably could have easily done 15, maybe 20. My arms at present are only about nine and a half inches around. At the peak of my bodybuilding, I had 20 and a half inch arms, solid biceps and triceps. I'm not aiming for that anymore. That was just a phase I went through. For right now, I'm gonna build up a little bit of muscle endurance and then eventually I'll go to slightly heavier weights to develop even more muscle mass.
The exercise that I just did there is called 21s. You go up slow for a count of seven, you go down slow for a count of seven, you do that seven times, and then you finish with seven full bicep curls. Hence, seven plus seven plus seven, 21s. That particular exercise is not as good for muscle endurance as it is for building muscle mass. And what do I mean by muscle mass? increasing the size of your muscle. The larger your muscle, the more body fat is used to make that muscle work. That particular exercise was called a frontal lift. Your shoulder is made of three deltoid muscles. You have the rear deltoid, the side deltoid, and the front. That particular exercise that I showed you works the frontal deltoid. Most people have very strong frontal deltoids and very weak back deltoids. That's why when I do frontal deltoid work, I typically only work with three pounds. To work the rear deltoid, typically you need to use a much heavier weight. The exercise that I just showed you there is called a reverse fly. That helps to work this rear deltoid as well as other muscles in your back shoulders called rhomboids and a little bit of your trapezius which is your neck and shoulder muscles. I typically like to work light so I only use five pounds for that for the simple reason that when the weight is farther away from your body it puts a lot more stress and strain on those muscles. It's easier to perform a weight resistance exercise when the weight is closer to your body. The farther away the weight is to your body, the more difficult it is to control. That's why lighter weights are a little better for exercises that require the weights to be farther away from your body. That particular exercise was called a one-arm row, and it works that rear delt. It also works this muscle, which is called your latimus dorsimus, and that's what you need for stabilization and strength in your shoulders when you're carrying a heavy pack. For that particular exercise, I'm using 10 pounds today. So the idea of each of these exercises is to do three sets of anywhere from eight to 12 repetitions. A repetition, one full bicep curl up and down, that's one full repetition. You do that eight or 12 times, that's called a set. And ideally, you want to be able to do anywhere from two to three sets. Once you get to that second or third set, the weight should be really, really hard for you to complete. If it's not, that means you're not challenging your muscles which means you're not going to get muscular growth and strength. Instead, you're going to get muscular endurance. That particular exercise was called a flat chest press. If you have a, a surface that inclines or declines, you're going to trigger different parts of your chest muscle. So for example, on an incline, you would reach more of the top chest muscle, and on a decline, you would work more of the lower chest muscle, which is called the pectoral muscle. The next exercise we're going to do is called flies. The chest fly requires the weight be held farther away from your body. For that reason, you want to use lighter weights. 
You also always want to be very controlled in your movements and only go to your range of motion that feels comfortable for your body. When you combine resistance training with flexibility activities such as yoga and or stretching, what you will find is that your range of motion will increase over time, as will your strength and your muscular endurance. Some of the best resistance training requires no free weights at all. It simply requires you to have a solid surface such as your countertop. That's what we're going to incorporate to do more chest work. We're going to do push-ups against the counter. You almost always want to put the countertop on the lowest part of your palm because that's where your greatest strength is. If you try to put it here or up here, you don't have the same strength in your hand to push you away. You can slightly bend your knees or you can keep your legs straight. Also, the height of your counter is going to determine the ease or difficulty in which it is to do that activity. This final push-up can be done just on your floor and the easiest way to do it is to bend your knees. If you have sensitive knees, you want to extra pad your surface. So if you're working with a yoga mat, you can fold the yoga mat two or three times and place it under your knees or you can place a towel or something like that. Give your knees the cushion that they need. So start off like this and then bring your hands ever so slightly forward and the easiest way this is the most modified push-up that you're going to do. Notice that I'm not dropping my black my back and I'm not rolling it up. Keep it strong and flat. Inhale down and exhale push up. Otherwise, if you can go a little bit further between your hands and your knees, And keep your hands wide because that provides greater support. Did you want to do a push-up? And now the more difficult and most challenging push-up. I haven't done this in years, so if I fall, don't laugh. Or at least try to contain your laughter. not gonna happen I just don't have the strength so here's the thing there's no shame in being weak and in fact sometimes it's good to challenge yourself to find out what strength you actually are lacking for example in day-to-day -day functional fitness if you can't carry a bag of five or six soup cans up a flight of stairs either because you're labored in your breathing or because it's too much weight in your arms, you probably need to work your cardiovascular, your legs, and your arms. Because the whole purpose of functional fitness is to help you be able to do the day-to-day -day activities as you get older. You know, when we're younger, it's easy to develop muscular strength and to take on a lot of weighty tasks. But as you get older, most seniors don't eat enough protein and they don't resistance train. And so what ends up happening is that your muscles begin to atrophy. They get smaller, they get weaker. And so doing functional activities every day becomes harder and harder. That's why it's so important, no matter what your age is, to start, if you haven't yet, some sort of functional resistance training exercise program that helps you to A, maintain the muscles that you have, and B, perhaps even help you develop muscles where in your body they've gotten weak from lack of use. That particular exercise was called tricep press. Today I'm using 
eight pounds, unless you have established a certain amount of muscular strength, anywhere from five to 10 pounds is usually sufficient. Anything less than five pounds, unless you're a lot older, usually only loans to muscular endurance. The trick with that particular activity is you want to keep the elbow close to the ear and you don't want it wobbling around. As you go down, you inhale and as you push that weight up, you exhale. And you want to go very, very slow. You have three muscles in the back of your arm. That's why it's called a tricep. Tri means three. You have three muscles in the back of your arm. These muscles, when you wave your arm, are responsible for preventing this little flag of fat from waddling and waving in the wind like a flag long after you've stopped moving your arm. That particular exercise is called a tricep kickback. For most women, three to eight pounds is sufficient to do that activity, especially if you're new to resistance training with free weights. As you progress and as those muscles get stronger and as they grow in endurance, you will be able to increase your weight. One of the things that I've experienced and as a fitness trainer have observed in other people is that a lot of times people hold their breath. And when you hold your breath, the oxygen isn't going to the muscle, which means you get tired a whole lot faster. For that reason, I wanna teach you some breathing techniques that I want you to practice should you choose to engage in this type of activity. Every exercise requires exertion, and it's upon that exertion where you want to exhale. So in the example of a shoulder press, the exhale is when you push up. It's more restful when you bring it down. That's when you want to inhale. When you're doing a bicep curl, most of the effort is when you're bringing the weight up. That's when you exhale. And as you send the weight down, inhale. When it comes to reverse flies, it's when the arms come up that you exhale and inhale as you lower the arms. When it comes to a tricep kickback, when your arm is pushing the weight away, that's when you wanna exhale. And as you're bringing the arm back towards you, inhale. So exhale, inhale. When it comes to push-ups, as you're moving towards the counter, you wanna inhale. As you're pushing away, you want to exhale. So that's it for the chest the upper back, the shoulders, and the arms. In another video, I will show you what I do to strengthen my buttocks and my legs. And in another video still, I will show you how I work out my core as someone who has triple prolapse and isn't able to do your conventional abdominal workouts. So thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. My body is already sore. Until I see you in a future video. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.